uh, to your heart's content. Pero huwag niyo ito i-prevent. Dahil alam niyo nung panahon ni M.A., itong Senado na lang was the last bastion of democracy. Kung bumigay yung Senado nun, ano na tayo? It would have been a dictator, dictatorship. Sir, PSS niyo po ba na dito sa Senate may space si Matubato? Or okay lang sa inyong sa iba, basta under Senate protection? Uh, either way, kung anong mag-decide ng majority, ang ayoko lang yung unilateral yung decision. Mm -hmm. Ako, magsasubmit ako kung yun ang gusto ng, ng uh, majority. Kaso dun sa committee hearing natin, wala namang nag-oppose. So, the motion was unanimous, unanimously adopted. So, yun ang Sir, sa hindi po ara si Presidente sa Timotabang. Eh, baka nag-iisip ako kung paano sumagot, di ba? Dahil baka lalong mapahamak siya, o yun yung ano talaga rito. Um, I believe, binagpas na yung panahon na magre-react siya. Dapat, kaso yung actions niya, eh, nag-i-indicate na talagang may tama. Reaction niyo po dun sa ano? Reaction niyo po sa Senator dun sa extension. Inamin ni Pangulo na hindi enough yung 3 to 6 months. Eh alam naman na natin yun eh. Nabinobola tayo ng sa kanya pala. Di ba? Uh, awan ko kung meron mga bumili nun. Pero ngayon alam niyo na binobola kayo. Pagdating ang after ng 6 months yan, extension na naman yan. Believe me. Okay. Kagaya nung last month, sinabi niya August, dodoblehin niya yung sweldo ng mga sundalo. August daw, effective. Lumagpas yung August, wala naman, di ba? December daw, the double end. Ganun lang yan. Kung hanggang kailan magkakabola yung Pilipino, it's back to you. So, <coughs> after this uh, resolution you filed to investigate the EBS, ano yung nakikita yung direksyon ng pagdinig dito? At meron pa bang uh, witness sa, sa level ni Matubato or something, someone similar na nakikita kayo pwede ipatawag? Um, it will give us an opening for that. Um... I'm not going to say na baka may, na meron lalabas, pero kung wala kasing hearing um, tukol doon sa subject na yan, wala ng chance for anybody to come out. So yun yung masasabi natin. We're just providing uh, that opening para kung meron magdalawang isip, ay magbago isip, di, meron siyang mapupuntahan. Ganyan yung ginawa namin doon sa hearing kay Vice President Binay, nagsimula lang kami kay Atty. Bundal, then marami nang lumabas. Sir, kay Matabato po ba may makukuha pang ibang information? May nang ibang evidence ni Petres uh, May mga sinabmit siya mga dokumento na I believe kailangan makita ng mga kababayan natin. That will bolster his uh, credibility. Okay. Uh, at the same time, palagay ko, ngayon, Simula nung last hearing hanggang sa susunod na appearance niya, ang pwede natin gawin is mag-fact-check tayo, di ba, yung mga sinabi niya, para ngayon, may kita natin kung ano talaga yung, ano niya, kung ang sabi ng pro and death. Okay. Thanks, sir. Sit, sit. Mabilitan lang. Sir, hindi ka rin na kayo nagsigil. Sobrang rin ko na. Ah, yan tatawa. Okay, next, sir. Okay. Yes, because ma'am, I cannot stand it. So I'm just gonna deliver also my own privileged speech tomorrow instead of confronting him now. All right, ma'am, your reaction that he uh, of his allegation that you're destroying the reputation. What is destroying the reputation of this country are the killings. It's not me. Big sabihin po sinasadya man o hindi. The effort to discredit is number one, destroying the image of our country abroad. Number two, destroying the image of the Senate as an institution and distracting us from much urgent work needed to be done. And third, destroying our long-honored traditions of collegiality, civility, of disagreeing but allowing the other person to speak freely when we disagree. Next slide, please. 
We have, we have to save our country from the efforts of a few politicians to discredit the president and his campaign against illegal drugs, crime, and corruption. That was my message in my first two speeches. Next slide. But this is what I humbly want to communicate to all of us here today. We have to save our nation from the efforts of a few people, not only politicians, not only Filipinos, but some in the international community, from destroying the image of our country, our economy, and the future of our next generation. Next slide. Cover of Time magazine, Night Falls on the Philippines. Ask our OFWs if that's how they feel. Take a survey today, Mr. President, upon the Philippine media. Were they safer in past administrations or are they safer now? Go to the communities. If six or seven out of ten Filipinos will not tell you they feel safer now, I will say goodbye to this August Hall which I admire and learn to love. That is not a depiction of what is really happening in our country. It's not an accurate depiction. Next slide. You would see there a quote by Senator De Lima. We are on a slippery slope towards tyranny, says Philippine Senator Leila De Lima. Whether it's a state sanctioned or not, I would say at the very least all these killings are state inspired. I don't know if she's quoted correctly. But that is the image that is being sold to the international community. Next slide. New York Times. Rodrigo Duterte ordered Philippine killings. Professed hitman testifies. Some of you here, our guests, the British parliamentarians, will say it's a fair headline. Anyway, uh, that was the real testimony. Let me answer that in a while. Next slide. Washington, Washington Post. Philippine witness, we killed for Duterte, fed body to crocodile. Next slide. BBC News interviewed an alleged hit woman or killer saying that for 20,000 pesos, she killed vigilante style. Next slide. Philippine Daily Inquirer just accurately reporting that the EU pressed the Philippines for end of executions. EU speaking as if it is a fact that our state is executing people extrajudicially. Meron na po nagbenta sa EU. People have already misled them in the way that they have misled members of the United Nations to believe that what is happening here is a fact. They have added the usual deaths, murder and homicide that happened during the Arroyo and Aquino time. They have added it to the drug war and made it appear that the Philippines is now a killing fields, that there is a atmosphere of impunity. That's why I challenged all of them to come here. Unfortunately, some of them who came here only witnessed the hearing and was only interested in interviewing the witness rather than going to our communities here in Pasay, Manila, Quezon City, Davao, Leyte, Ilocos, Pampanga. Next slide, please. Bakit lahat na lang ng patay sa Pilipinas kasalanan ni Duterte? Is our president the Grim Reaper? Is the president liable for all of the deaths? He is here to save the innocent from being killed by the drug addicts, by the drug pushers. He is here to free us from the drug menace that has already ensnared almost 5% of our population. While OFWs are working, sacrificing, being abused, in some places in our country, their children are being pressured by their peers, are being sold dr drugs, some of them bad, uh, the, the kind of drugs that, that doesn't only kill you slowly, but kill you instantly. Next slide. 
Kitang-kita po ang bias ng ilang senador laban sa krusada ng Pangulo. Question, is this a fair statement? Yes. I was once biased against the Arroyo administration. Is it wrong to be biased against a president? No. Because this is a democracy. You can be prejudiced, you can be biased, you can be for him, you can be against him, you can not have an opinion. That is your right. Then why am I standing up here and complaining? Because while you have rights, you also have responsibilities. Next slide. The responsibility of a chairperson in an investigation in aid of legislation is for the factual, for the for a factual investigation, so that the truth will come out. And as I said, this is the third time that I have, I have stood up here. And if you look, I, we don't have time to look at all of the statements of the Honorable Senator De Lima, but she has already made a judgment when she was in the CHR. She has already made a judgment when she was in a DOJ. And if it is true that her witness was in the WPP Witness Protection Program in 2014, she had the witness but did not file the case. But when she got here to the Senate and got the Committee on Justice and Human Rights, she decided to chair the committee, which is her right to do so. But she refused to be neutral, Mr. Chair, with, with all due respect. If you tell me, Alan, ikaw na lang mag-chair, I will say, I cannot. Because I am also biased. Let someone else chair. In my past speech, I said, I'm not even asking that she be removed from the Committee on Justice. Only from certain hearings where we cannot expect cold neutrality. But look at her opening statement. Marahil, mayugnay natin ang kababalaghang ito sa nangyari sa Davao City mula nung dekada nobenta hanggang sa kasalukuyan at kung paano ang buong Pilipinas ngayon ay larawan ng siyudad ng Davao sa mahigit dalawang dekadang pamumuno ni dating Mayor Duterte. Look at that statement. First of all, she takes it as a fact that there is a DDS. Duterte death squad po yun, ha? marami ng DDS ngayon. She takes it as a fact. Number two, she is saying that mauugnay, you can link up what was happening in Davao to the country. So no wonder, even if DDS or killings in Davao has no place in the present EKR, EKJ hearings, we brought that surprise witness without informing the co-chairman, Senator Lacson, without informing the members. When our tradition in this August Hall is that when we have a surprise witness, we keep the identity a surprise. We keep his testimony a surprise. But we let the members know that there will be a key member so they can prepare and so that they will be in the hearings. Kaya maraming hindi nag -attende. Until 4 o'clock the day before. We were not given the list of invitees. And even when we were given it at 4.05 the day before, wala po doon that there will be an extra witness. Next slide, please. The chairman or chairperson has the responsibility to vet the witness and test the credibility of the witness before allowing the witness to testify before the committee. That's very clear, Mr. Chairman. Let me go back to the slides I showed you about BBC Time, the Washington Post. Is there anything wrong per se of that headline when they themselves with their eyes, ears perceive the hearings here? No, I do not blame them. I do not say per se it is bad journalism, but take in these factors. One, they were fed by Philippine sources. Paulit-ulit ang ilan publication, ilan politiko, including Se Senator De Lima, of misleading them in the numbers, saying that 3,000 na ang patay, drug lahat to. Using the words vigilante killings, kill list, um, extrajudicial killings in a very loose term. Second, dynamics of Congress and the Parliament. Wala na po sa likod natin ang British parliamentarians. I haven't heard sa France, sa UK, sa US, that an unvetted Isang witness na dadalhin doon na hindi mo sigurado kung ano sasabihin, hindi mo alam kung galing sa mental hospital o hindi mo alam 
kung ano ang motibo, kung anong gustong gawin, ay dadalin sa Kongreso. Kaya hindi natin masisi ang mga foreign news outlets na yun ang nireport. Bakit? Eh kasi ang tingin nila sa Kongreso ng Pilipinas mataas. You will not put a witness who is not credible. I, I sympathize with Senator Lacson because of the witness that was placed before him. Uh, Mr. Mawanay. No, and I think Senator... No, as a victim. Victim. There were many victims in this hall. But, remember, Mr. President, when they victimized the senators, it hit them individually in this institution. It did not hit the country. But putting a witness against the president makes it seem that the whole country is for extrajudicial killing. Pag binasa niyo po yung mga article, it says, He's immensely popular with 92%, so they let him do it, etc., etc., something like that. So they're giving the impression that we are not a civilized people, that we are not a modern people with values, with, with strong moral values, and just because our president is popular, and just because we're fed up with drug lords, we'll just kill them all. In fact, I heard from many people saying even the addicts are being killed. When many, many times... This has been disputed. In fact, later on, I will show you a slide where businessmen are volunteering hundreds of millions of pesos to build rehab centers. Lastly, Mr. President, kung yung ibang mga jaryo TV sa atin, nakalink din naman sa negosyo, they try to always be objective, but they also have their interest. That is the same abroad. Geopolitics. Do you think there will be no repercussions when the president said a independent foreign policy? Do you think some countries in this world have not gotten news that the Philippines just follows them? Ku ano sabihin nila sunod ang Pilipinas. And this is upsetting them. And that is probably why it is much easier to get all these issues together, extrajudicial killings, foreign policy, what's up between Duterte and China, what's up with the economy and everything. Next slide, please. I was not even allowed to speak for a few minutes, Mr. President, when a colleague of ours questioned my right to speak. Let me clarify, Mr. President. First of all, it is our tradition here that non-members will have a voice but no vote in any hearing. Secondly, Mr. President, it is our tradition here that after the first round, there will be a second, third, fourth round. It is only Manny Pacquiao who ends at round 10 and usually knocks out his opponent before that. But for senators, we can go any amount of rounds for as long as the chairman says that it will continue. If not, we will do uh, next day. Our, our record, if I'm not mistaken, in the ZTE hearings was 11 hours. Mr. President, when my right to speak was questioned, initially I wasn't even given a right just to explain that for the purpose of that hearing, I am a member or deemed a member because I am po yung agenda. I gave a privileged speech. And as author of either the bill, the resolution, or as the person who gave the speech, you are invited to that hearing and you are allowed to speak. Okay. Having said that, Mr. President, one of our colleagues sent me an apology letter and none of us here are perfect. I'm not perfect. If I offended him, I'm also sorry. If I offended the Filipino people, I am also sorry. But when you are in that situation, and words are told to you, and you are shocked, being a senator of nine years and a congressman of nine years, and, you know, um, how do I put it, Mr. President? We come to work knowing that we will have the warm appreciations of our colleagues, whether or not they agree with us. How many times have I disagreed with the majority leader? We have traded places. Sha majority, minority ako. Ako majority, sha minority. We have argued on many bills. Nagkataasan pa ng bosses. But I always go up to him and say, Boss, kamusta? Pasensya na. He always goes up to me and says, Lan, 
ano lang yan, issue lang yan, we have Mirianda together. But I will not go into the details because precisely, I understand our colleague at sabi niya, dala na rin lang ng, ng uh, nangyari. No? But may I point out, Mr. President, that when things like that happen, there are still rules. I appreciate the Sergeant of Arms coming to me and saying, Sir, tumayo ako, but I wasn't going to accost you. But he did stand up. Why? Because Chairperson De Lima called for the Sergeant of Arms, and that was uncalled for. Why? When you say you are out of order, that simply means there is a rule violated. You only call the Sergeant at Arms when there is disorderly behavior. When you are there to remove an audience or the senator because of disorderly behavior. So there is no gagging in this Senate. So if I insist to keep talking on the same topic, then that is disorderly behavior. But if were, I was going to talk on a different topic, so for example, Mr. President, I said, I'd like to give a privileged speech. You said no. You said out of order. I can appeal your judgment, Mr. President, and we will vote. That is one of my options. The other option is I will say, Mr. President, I agree. May I go to another matter? I will not now stand on a matter of personal and collective uh, privilege. I will now make a manifestation. That is my right. That is in order. That is not out or of order. Yet what happened, and if you review the tapes, in that instance, upon uh, making the judgment that I was out of order, I was denied the right to appeal to the body. I was denied the right to speak again. And I was threatened that the Sergeant of Arms will get me and throw me out. <coughs> and thank you, Mr. Sergeant of Arms, for your level-headedness and for your patience. That's why walang nangyari. And thank you, PNP, and thank you, audience, na none of you came rushing. And thank you also, Senator Trillanes, though all of us, both of us were in a heated um, argument. We kept it to words, and we didn't go beyond words. No. But Mr. President, will we allow it to go any further? Mr. President, let's go to the root cause. The root cause is ginagamit kasi yung committee, not for a factual finding of extrajudicial killings, but to go after the President and to, in effect, wittingly or unwittingly, nasisiraan yung buong bansa. Next slide, please. May I respectfully assert that Senator Dilima, in her desire to destroy the president, is destroying the integrity and reputation of the Senate, and worse, damaging the image of the country and the people worldwide. Sir President, tignan niyo po yung internet. Nung araw po, it's up to the lawyers to cross-examine. But with the world of social media, every phone has a camera. You can rewind. You can fast forward, you can copy, you can even read lips. Nakapatay ang mic, natetape pa rin ng powerful mic ng mga may camera o kaya nababasa yung lips. I'll not go through all of it, Mr. President, but tignan nyo po yung witness na dinala po dito. Una, sinabi, Paolo Duterte is a drug addict. Vice Mayor, the Honorable Vice Mayor of, of uh, Davao. There was no question from the chair what the evidence was. But when I cross-examined him, Mr. President, lumabas hearsay. Narinig pa lang niya. Wala pala siyang ebidensya at all. Di niya nakita, di niya narinig, hindi niya nakita yung shabu. Nung una ang sabi niya, bodyguard siya, hinahatid siya, malapit siya. Nung sinabi ko, ba't hindi mo na-obserban? Eh sir, hindi naman ako dikit sa kanya then when I was saying, so it's only because of your perception. Mukha lang pala, parang lang pala, or in Bisaya, murag. No? Murag lang pala. Ano sabi niya? Hindi sir, alam na alam sa Davao, rinig na rinig. Okay. Sinabi naman po na siya ay smuggler sa port at may hawak ng sasa port sa Davao. But the Secretary of Justice, Secretary De Lima, during that time, investigated this. And she even helped ask... Uh, Mayor Duterte, or at least uh, it was um, BAR's Commissioner Kim Henares who called Mayor Duterte and asked him for help. If they had evidence against Paulo Duterte, why didn't they file cases? Why did they allow 
Mayor Duterte to testify in this August Hall. Ba't pinabayaan mag-testify as if totoo? Sinabi po nung pinatay daw yung Richard King, and my condolences to the family, it's so hard to get over a killing in the family, but to be brought into the limelight like this and then to add certain, ano, certain um, circumstances that gives pain to the family, let me, in behalf of the Senate, with the, with, the, with the permission of my colleagues, apologize to their family. Una, sinabi sa McDonald daw pinatay. Oh. Hindi ba, Mr. President, mukha na tayong napakababaw na Senado? Tignan niyo po social media. Punong-puno ng letrato ni Jollibee at ni McDonald's nag-aaway. At sinasabi ni McDonald's, Jollibee, ikaw ang may hawak nung witness na to, no? Pinasabi mo na may patayan dito sa McDonald's. We are being ridiculed. Simply because the witness was not vetted. Simply because hindi muna pinagawan ng apidabit at hindi muna tinignan. Sir President, I've never seen a better video of thriller than that of Michael Jackson. But for 20 years, madami pong gumagaya nun. But may lumabas po ngayon na video na parang zombie, parang thriller, pero binabarel ng tatlong pong tao supposedly. Supposedly, mocking, ridiculing the testimony of Mr. Mato Bato of the killing of a certain NBI agent, Amisola. And again, to their family, condolences, no? And we're sorry that this is being brought up. Mr. President, the witness claims to be a professional hitman, a professional killer. What is professional? Professional doesn't just mean that you get a card from the PRC. Professional does, does mean that you pass an exam and you're already a member of the Professional Regulatory Commission. No. Professional means you're the best at your job. 30 kayo, tatlong po kayo, inubos daw ang laman ng barel. Senator Lacson, ilan ang laman ng usual ng isang magazine? Seven. Gawin na lang natin five shooter na lang, hindi na seven. Oh. Five shooter ang ginamit. 150 bullets yon. Professional killers. Hindi mapatay yung papatayin nila. Kaya dumating pa daw si Duterte na may dalawang magazine. Sir President, look at the international headlines. You know, Mr. President, who I pity most here? The OFWs. You know why? They are starting to write they're starting to send messages to these international outlets. In Australia, a brave OFW wrote to the 30 or 60 minutes saying that what you have presented is totally unfair. Hindi yan ang nangyayari sa Pilipinas. But the problem is, Mr. President, these OFWs need the foreign media, need the host media of where they are, because they also need protection as migrant workers. Yet they are forced to stand up to protect the integrity of their president and their nation because it is being falsely pictured. And where is that falsity emanating from? From this August Hall. Next slide, please. Sir President, with all due respect, anyone can file a resolution. There's nothing per se wrong about Senator Trillanes filing resolution number 151. But isn't it obvious, ito na yung next step. Committee on Justice na naman, DDS na naman. So we know where this is going. I will not mention any more to you what happened during the hearing because napanood nyo. I will answer questions. I was approached by some of my friends in the Liberal Party and asked, are you accusing all of us? And I told them, no. If you look at my statement, I said there are two or three senators and two of them are liberals, and I even gave their names. And I said, that is my theory. And when I went out, and thank you to Rappler, nakuha nila, side view, ang sinabi ko, I don't think the vice president is involved. That's why if she's offended that I, I, I said that, actually, ako dapat ma-offend. Dahil 
kailangan medyo mag-research ng konti yung kanyang mga media people. Because I did not say she was involved. But by force of law, pag matanggal ang Pangulo, ang Vice President upo. And many plots around the world does not include the Vice President. It just happens and people close to the, to the successor will be the one doing this. No? And Mr. President, that was not my only theory. Review the hearing. Ang tinanong ko sa witness, ano ba gusto mo mangyari? Pag nangyari to, sabi niya para malaman buong Pilipinas. O hindi ba matatanggal siya bilang Pangulo? Oo. O, sino magiging Vice President? Ang Vice President po natin magiging Presidente. O, sino ba galit sa Pangulo? Hindi ba drug lords galit sa Pangulo? Hindi ba ang uh, oligarchs na pinangalanan ng Pangulo galit sa kanya? Hindi ba ang drug lords ang uh, etong uh, illegal gambling lords galit na rin dahil susunod sila? So, Mr. President, I named several groups that want the president out. And there's no denying that. No? That's why I was testing my theory there. And I stand by it. But I did not make false accusations. Many of the people in the Liberal Party are close friends. And I will not generalize. In fact, ang kadibati ko, si Senator Trillanes, ay kapartido ko. Diba? But I said, that's obviously Senator De Lima and obviously Senator Trillanes is part of this. Next slide. So, President, may I just emphasize, hindi lang po pusher ang kalaban ng ating Pangulo. He has launched the war on poverty. Yung pong endo na gusto ng maraming mga negosyante, nandito si Joel Vinanueva, trying to make sense, trying to talk to everyone, the labor unions, uh, palace, the... Uh, businessmen on how to have a law that will satisfy everyone. Many of the oligarchs help the country. Some of them do not. Some of these oligarchs have launched things to discredit the president. Some of them are now donating left and right to help the president. War against crime, illegal drugs, and corruption. The president has already announced that the DOJ is already looking into many matters involving politicians in corruption and last the war on war or the quest for lasting peace. Here and abroad, many are not comfortable that members of the left or the communist are in the cabinet. That is the reality. Hindi ko pa nalagay dyan yung war on illegal um, gambling na inannounced ni Chief PNP Bato de la Rosa. So, Mr. President, there, there are many more that I can name. Next slide. But look at the initial reaction of some business groups and some people. People even want to invest. We are in, the, if, we are in a different situation now. It is totally different from what we experienced in the past, commenting on the confidence in the Duterte's war against drugs. Next slide. Philippine Star Global. 13 top business groups to help rebuild rehab centers. Next. These are some of the things being done while we're talking about this. Duterte ordering the cutting of red tape. Duterte asking the chief presidential legal to find out how we can distribute the 71, but that's almost 100 billion COCO levy funds or make use of it. Dole to impose a moratorium on ENDO. Next slide. Executive order on FOI. Uh, an EO on agri-land conversion moratorium. Even the Supreme Court has moved so that there will be more courts to handle drug cases. Peace talks are seeing the light of day. Next slide. Mr. President, in the end, we might all lose these wars. But the biggest loser will not be Duterte. It will be the economy, the political institutions, and the entire nation. So why sit by and just watch? Why allow our institution to be used that way? There are 24 senators here. There are 30 committees. Senator De Lima is a very talented senator, a very experienced lawyer, an efficient public servant. She can handle so many other committees, Mr. President. But Mr. President, allow me to appeal to this August body, 
Gusto ba natin pagkausap natin mga sekretary, eto na lang pinag-uusapan natin. Kausap natin mga foreigners, eto na lang pinag-uusapan. Or do we want to talk about building bridges, building subways, building uh, railroads, no? building homes, finding the latest in drug rehab, no? um, upgrading our technical skills, finding money for K-12 para mag-succeed. Siguro sabi nung iba, Sir President, uh, Alan, we're colleagues here, we're all doing that. Yes. But please admit to me, every time you talk to a secretary or a foreigner or a ambassador, you start by asking how's the president, he's a colorful guy, uh, this drug war, etc. Parating dun muna na pupunte. Because ito ang ginagawang front and center. Eh. Na, nakita nyo na ba sa Time Magazine, The Economist or CNNBBC, that ano, business is so um, enthusiastic and upswing? Sir President, I went to Senator Recto because I am a fan of the way he does research and I believe he is the economic guru of the Senate. And Moody's is coming to the country as well as other groups to reassess, to find out opinions, etc. And Senator Recto told me, Alan, don't forget political risk. Lahat itong ginagawa abroad is trying to show people na malaki ang political risk sa Pilipinas. So kung ikaw ay gagawa ng plantas ng kotse, pwede ka sa Vietnam, pwede ka sa Malaysia, pwede ka sa Thailand, sa Pilipinas, ay wag na sa Pilipinas, baka magkagulo eh. May atmosphere of impunity eh. Kung ikaw ay pharmaceutical na dati sa France ka gumagawa, and then ayaw mo sa China for some reason, oh Vietnam, India, or Philippines, wag na sa Pilipinas kasi magulo dun eh. That is the implication. So with tourism, Mr. President, Thailand gets 10 million Chinese tourists. We get 500,000. There are neighbors. I will not share with you all the statistics. Senator Dick Gordon is the expert in tourism. Mr. President, may I recognize? Senator Pacquiao, for purposes of interpolation, is recognized. Mr. President, uh, I move that the chairmanship of the and members of the Committee on Justice be declared vacant. Mr. President, may I have a uh, one minute suspension, Mr. President? Uh, before we move to Senator Trilon, yes. just to point out that under the rules, you cannot uh, declare as vacant the chairmanship of a committee. There is no rule that allows that. I think uh, he, the motion encompasses the entire membership, Senator well, I, I thought, well, yes, sir. clarify. Uh, Mr. President, uh, May we hear the motion the again, Mr. President? What? Sorry? The motion, can, you, can we restate the motion? I thought also you were interpolating. But I move that the chairmanship, uh, chairmanship and members of the Committee on Justice uh, be declared vacant. Mr. That is President. the motion. And there is a pending motion to suspend. Session is suspended for a few minutes.